Creating conversations. It's what we do on arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. All right, let's do it. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 154 with Eve Rodsky and Dr. Aditi Narukar. I am so proud of you two for putting this podcast together because we, the one thing that the headlines are not sharing these days, the psychologists and psychotherapists have long lists. And, and I keep hearing, we aren't taking on new patients. Well, what about those that need help? Well, how about your podcast? Time out, uh, you, know, for, you know, with fair play. Well, thanks, Arrow, for saying that. Um, yes, I think we both think that um, burnout um, plus loneliness is a really terrible combination right now. But so many people are experiencing burnout. So many ex- people from this pandemic are experiencing loneliness. And so we're offering a place for them to come, uh, all different family structures to learn tips and tricks and strategies for how to use their time our most valuable currency on ourselves as opposed to giving it away for free. You know, I'm so glad that you describe time as being very valuable because I, I daily write. I write in the morning and then I defrag at night. And and time is always a subject that I deal with because I, I call myself a Windows liver. In other words, I, I basically live in Windows. Okay, I've got 10 minutes. I can go do this. Oh, I've got, I got an hour. I can go do this. I'm not the only one doing this. You know, it's interesting, Arrow, because that sense of time poverty, right? Like we're always running against the clock. We don't have enough time. There's too many things to do. We really feel overwhelmed now more than ever. And that is also a feature of burnout. And so we hope that these conversations that we are having with our guests on Time Out, the podcast, really speaks to that. We've been overwhelmed with the positive feedback we've gotten from our early listeners and it's really struck a nerve it's something that we're all facing and so we get to do it together where there's such a therapeutic healing benefit to that listeners need to understand how easy it is to find you two with your podcast and that is just go to the iheart app and 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 find you because th- you guys really do this is a conversation that we can put in our car as well as our offices as we get back to back to work and things like that because you guys speak a truth and tr- with transparency Well, thank you, Arrow. Um, What we're really looking at is ways to have a secret formula for thriving during a really difficult time. And we found that secret formula. We look at boundaries. How do you set true boundaries? How do you say no to things that you don't want to do? Obligation and duty have been too long, our guiding values. We look at systems, how to put systems in place, to make your time more efficient. And then of course it all comes down to communication. Uh, How do you ask for what you need? So many of us have been frayed. So we've been speaking to each other when emotion is high and cognition is low. Um, And so we're looking at how do we look at communication as our most important practice. And all three boundary systems in communication uh, require, that secret formula require tools, tips, tricks, um, and that's what we break down each week and in, in, in each episode. You talk about communications. I, because I'm a daily writer and I talk about this a lot on iHeartRadio, is that if you don't start that conversation with yourself first, I don't expect you to have a conversation with another human being. So true, Arrow. Self-talk is so critical and we all have that voice in our heads that's really berating us, especially now, you know, we're seeing all time highs of anxiety and depression and insomnia, stress related conditions everywhere, tripling of prescriptions to treat these conditions. So that voice is just really, really loud for a lot of people. So we really do need that reset. And this podcast is truly an antidote to that. It helps us get back into our bodies and into our heads in a kinder way. It helps us to really think about things from a scientific perspective. We're all going through something really difficult. It's the perfect storm and it's unprecedented. So how are we about, you know, we're we're navigating this new terrain together. Eve, how do you deal with those situations where, you know, you're in circles of people or you're in just different businesses and things like that, where they look at your positive energy and they, they give you the eye because they don't believe you. They don't trust you. They think you're trying to sell something when in reality, all you're trying to do is motivate by using your own personal energy. 
Well, usually I would say those people don't have their, um, it's more a reflection on them than of you. Mm -hmm. The other thing, uh, the eye that we often get though, Arrow, is from our partners. My research into um, how couples work has shown me that sometimes the people who love us the most resent us the most for taking that time away. Um, and that is not okay. Um, I love that you write in the mornings. Um, and, and we need to protect the time for our creative pursuits. And by creativity, we don't mean just a paintbrush um, <laughs> or even just writing. We've seen so much creativity from people who now recognize that they have to add it to their day. Because now we know that creativity is associated with daily flourishing. Your writing practice is probably more important than exercise um, and keeping you mentally and physically healthy over the long term. Well, it, it led me to a podcast We when we lost uh, Chris Cor- Cornell, I thought, my God in heaven, we have got to figure out a way to get to these creative people because a lot of people don't understand it. So I created a podcast called Creativity, the Addiction. I treat my creativity like the addiction that it is. It's so interesting because creativity arrow has so many benefits to the brain. Mm -hmm. It helps us cope with difficult emotions, especially now, like you've said, we're seeing so much creativity. You know, pandemic baking is a form of creativity. It helps us adapt to new situations. And what's the pandemic been? It's been new in every realm of life with our work and our spouses and in parenting. And so creativity is really that secret ingredient to the recipe of having a good, fulfilling and stress-free life, even in the midst of a pandemic. One of the things that we're facing, Eve, these days is that, and, and, I, and I celebrate it, the, there, there, are, there are people in their fi- mid-50s and above that are, that are taking on early retirements. The problem is they don't know what to do with their lives. How can we get through this? And I know that somewhere along the line, you're going to have a podcast on this. <laughs> well, the way we look at it is that um, the earlier you can access your creative muscles, the better. Too many of us have lived in our roles um, as parents and our partners and or professionals um, and our caretakers. And when you're just solely defined by your roles, what ends up happening is one day you wake up and you say, I don't even know who I am anymore. Right. And so this podcast is looking at identity um, and creativity as that antidote um, to burnout. Because honestly, uh, what you're doing with your creativity addiction is so important because really the truth is that creativity is the, is the, um, antidote to burnout in a way that um, other things just aren't. We have to be interested in our own lives, um, whether we find it in retirement or we find it now. But being interested in our own lives is a recipe for mental and physical health. Doctor, do you think that we're suffering from that disease of, so where is this new normal? And, And if we don't find the new normal, because these darn headlines are just so negative anymore, how do we find that escape? Oh, man, we are all suffering from that disease. You know, this pandemic, we thought it was going to be a sprint a couple of weeks or maybe a few months or maybe just that summer. And it's ended up to be a marathon. And our brains can't make that switch. We are really equipped. Our brains are really good at managing stress in the short term. But when it becomes long term and chronic, that's when things like burnout and mental health issues can set in because we don't have a finish line. It just keeps moving. But there are glimmers of hope right now. This podcast is one. And we really do believe, you know, from the COVID perspective that this pandemic will soon slow down and we can return to a new normal. But what does that new normal look like? How are we going to step into this new normal? And we're totally changed with the experience of the pandemic. And so we really hope that these conversations that we're having with our guests can help people navigate and really figure out who they want to be when they emerge from this difficult time. Who they want to be. Yeah, that takes me right to one of the podcasts where, Eve, you talk about, I'm not wearing my child's name around my neck. And, and I love the way that you give them moms permission to be themselves. Well, for, you know, for so long, Arrow, um, the second I was given my my son 13 years ago, um, I was erased. My name was taken away from yep. me. The nurse in the hospital started calling me mom. I got my first gift 
of my son's initial to wear around my neck. And so um, I decided symbolically to put my own initial back on my neck and to start communicating to my family that I'm a person. My name is Eve. Mm. Um, I love you, but I'm not going to be defined by you. And I think for so many women, that's a really hard thing to to unpack because we're conditioned from birth to give our time our most valuable currency away to others for free um and we we deal with those difficult themes on the podcast but we also um recognize that people we're going to meet people where they are not everybody um wrote a book about their partner and betrayed them in a terrible light like I did in in my first book but um we're going to meet people where they are to say um, where are you? How can we move you forward to a place where um, you're not overwhelmed and bored, which were the two most uh, common words I heard in my research? You're speaking the language of mindfulness. I practice meditation. I don't practice it. I live it is what I do. And and and, that, and that's exactly it. Where am I right now? How are we going to grow forward? Tomorrow can't happen until I sit, you know, sit down in this moment of now. So Arrow, I practice mindfulness as well, and I teach mindfulness. So that really hits home when you say that. Um, Yeah, the timelessness of the present moment, right? And when the present moment is uncomfortable and you don't feel like you want to be there, you're always rushing to the next thing. But when you are dealing with a difficult time like the pandemic and this never ending um, finish line, what's the next thing that you want to get to? It's also painful and uncomfortable and causes a lot of discomfort and pain. So really being able to settle into the now with all of its challenges and looking at positive things, even in the now in the midst of it all. You know, there's lots of scientific principles that we talk about during the podcast and lots of real concrete tips that people can do to create and cultivate that sense of mindfulness in their daily lives to help them through. Over the past 25 months, for the two of you, have you developed a new mantra? For instance, my mantra is, we are not alone, we are not in fear. And when I get into those moments of anxiety, I say that, we are not alone, we are not in fear. Yes, for me, Arrow, it's been an hour holding a child's hand in the pediatrician's office is just as valuable as an hour in the boardroom. I think we have to start looking at value, um, looking at value in our country by starting to return to our values. When we're guided by our deeply held values, whether for me, fairness, justice, community, Um, we end up making better decisions than when other people, when society makes those decisions for us. Doctor, do you think that corporate America needs to get involved in changing their bad habits in the way of, hey, look, I'm not going to tell you what to do anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to rebuild this relationship. I know you had some free time with remote uh, working and things like that, but we've got to build a relationship from the ground up. You know, Arrow, there are very few silver linings during the pandemic, but if there is one silver lining is that we are really in the C-suite, especially bringing mental health to light, burnout to light, and really understanding that people are more than their roles and their titles at work. So in this new era, whenever that will be, hopefully this year or next year when the pandemic officially ends, people are really going to sit up and take notice. They already have people in the C-suite, the CEOs. There is a real revolution going on in the workplace. And people are both workers and leaders are really thinking about how to create something new from what we've been through. There is such a sense of anger and frustration, the great resignation, of course, up almost 5 million people. And so we really do believe that people are making a big change. You know, finally, personal lives and professional lives are melding. Of course they are with working from home. But how do you navigate that? It's a difficult thing. We don't have a playbook or a rule book for that. And so I think that this podcast really helps to create that sense of a rule book and a guide We give really concrete things that people can do to help navigate and find their way through this changing time. As you grow with your podcast, Eve, and because I've been podcasting since 2012, and you know the one thing in in helping with others with universities and stuff like that, they always go, I don't know what I'm going to podcast about. You seem to be the type of person that is watching others. You're like the silent watcher, the wolf in the brush, and you're watching how others are acting and reacting in real life, and you're saying, I'm going to talk about that because this is where we can grow from. It's almost like the universe is speaking through you. 
Well, I really believe in research. Yeah. And so I don't I don't like to speak and pontificate. <laughs> what I what what Aditi and I um, we we came together to do this together because we are both really um, intense researchers. We really believe in science and data, and and they guide us into what and what we talk about, what themes we're seeing, and the themes that we were really alarming to me were this idea that people were reporting overwhelm and boredom together. And again, as we said, that that feels like a deadly combination. Um, and we know now that creativity, your daily writing practice that you talked about, Arrow. Um, one woman, uh, shout out to uh, to Renee, who who started to race car drive at 67, <laughs> and to my new friend David uh, in Texas, who started bull riding in his 60s. That feels dangerous to me, but okay, we love you, David. We're hearing from people, um, whether whether it's podcasts, guests, or whether it's um, the thousands of people that Aditi and I have seen and interviewed. And so we're taking that data and then we're reporting it back to our audience. Doctor, do you do you feel the presence of people when you do the podcast? Because I mean, I, I, I because I'm radio trained, we always envision the listener being there. But but you guys are not radio people. How do you envision those that are picking up on the message? So what's interesting is that we have an all-female team, so both Eve and I, but also our entire production team is women. And so we internally have really resonated with the message as we're speaking. What's also been fascinating and really just so welcome is the outpouring of heartfelt messages that we got on day one of launching this podcast. You never know when you're starting something new if it's really going to resonate. And man, did it ever. We were the Lord. And it keeps happening. You know, we've really struck a nerve with these conversations. People have been feeling this inside their homes privately, but we are not talking about it publicly. But this podcast is really that opportunity for people to feel that sense of connection, even when they're feeling isolated during quarantine or isolation or during that time. And when we speak, both Eve and I are trained as communication experts. And so nice. when we're speaking, we're always speaking to the audience. We're never just speaking, right? When you are speaking, whether you're giving a talk or a podcast or an interview, you must think of the listener and the audience and everything you say is directly to that person. Those moments when you are speaking with a large group of people, I think one of the one of the greatest gifts that we've got from the universe is the fact that when you say something and you have eye to eye contact, I think one of the greatest things that's happened since the lockdown, I only see your eyes. And so therefore I'm learning how to read your eyes. How many people have you bumped into that that are you know still struggling with the way that the human shares their eye shapes? Well, Arrow, you sound very spiritual. <laughs> so um, <laughs> um, I think that you are you think about things, and I'm sure that's why um, people love listening to you. Um, yes, I think being able to look at each other differently, look at ourselves differently, look at our communities differently, mm -hmm. looking, at, looking at our relationship differently. So I think it's a metaphorical look. And also, like you said, physically, it's manifesting itself in how we communicate. But I do think that um, too many of us have still not understood really what communication um, is for right. um, back to the research. You know, you were talking. We were talking about research earlier. We look at communication on this podcast um, as a practice. Um, I surveyed a thousand people on social media asking what their most important practice is, and I did it vaguely on purpose. Um, but often I get, well, what do you mean by that? Or exercise or meditation? But I was really looking for at least one person to say communication was their most important practice. And too often we look at communication as a means to an end. I talked to my partner because I had to get him uh, out the door, tell my kids to get out the door. I talked to my kids because I had to tell them to grab their backpack. <laughs> we don't often look at communication as a practice between two individuals. And the great thing about a practice is if I get it wrong, I don't say to you, I'll never come back to the table. Um, a practice is saying, okay, well, I didn't get it right this time, but I'll do it better tomorrow or in an hour. Um, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for new strategies uh, of how to communicate, whether it's through eyes yeah. um, or through uh, our, our, our whole bodies, our, our verbal tones, 
our words as a practice. Oh my God, body language. The one thing I see a lot lately, and, and so many musicians complain about this, people with their arms crossed. That tells me that you have shut off in your own, in your, in your own, your own world. How do we break free of these walls? It's interesting, you know, because really understanding your body, the mind-body connection, how stress and mental health can really impact that. We're all feeling very vulnerable right now, Ara. We're living through a pandemic. It's been really difficult for many people, lots of grief and suffering. So when we cross our arms or do any, you know, sorts of protective maneuvers, yep. it's a coping strategy. There's so many other coping strategies that we use that are unhealthy and aren't to our benefit. And so our conversations that we're having with our guests and each other during this podcast helps us reframe those negative coping strategies to something more positive. So we can have a more open outward stance with the world and with each other rather than having our arms crossed. Eve, will there be a future podcast in the way of how COVID, instead of being a community trying to help heal each other, but it's become political because and it's broken up families, people that are vaccinated, people that aren't. I lost my mother because they chose up in Montana not to get vaccinated. This, this, we've got to get families to come back together. Well, honestly, we really believe that it's back to what we started with here, Arrow, um, when you talked about your daily writing practice. We believe a way back to each other is this idea of how you share your creativity. What we're seeing, and again, would I be friends with David, the bull rider from Texas? Um, you know, I'm a woman from from uh, New York City. Um, no, I don't think we ever would have met, but we met over a shared love of this idea of sharing our creativity mm -hmm. with each other. Um, and so we believe that a way back um, out of this politicized notion of health, um, and this is why Dr. Didi and I work so well together as, as a doctor, um, she and I see this, um, she sees this, that, you know, really being curious about mm -hmm. something, something that matters to you, mm -hmm. connecting with others over that, and then completing something. So you could love eating a pie or drinking or binge watching TV, but what we're talking about is what it feels like to bake a pie and share that with a neighbor, what it feels like to host a podcast and share what you're thinking with your audience. This lights us it awakes our parts in our brain that then we can be more generous with each other and connect in new ways um you are right we're in a very politicized time and we're really hoping to give people sort of semblances of connecting to themselves in a way that they can sort of see past um all these fractures i i, I don't want to sound weird here but but in listening to your podcast i mean this is probably weird but you you made me feel warm i felt warmth inside my soul in in listening to the two of you so it's interesting arrow you know you asked us the question about the voice the human voice is something that from our very infancy and even in the uterus that connection to the voice is so powerful we are highly attuned to sussing out whether this person is authentic and kind and really wants to help. And so when people listen to the podcast, that warmth that you're feeling is because Eve and I genuinely want to make, to all of the things that we talk about, we genuinely want to make people feel better about this difficult experience through the various techniques and strategies that we're offering. So thank you for saying that. That means so much. We hope to convey that warmth every single time in every single episode. I, I can't wait to watch you guys grow even further than what you are because this is just the start on iHeartRadio and I just, I just, I'm just so proud of you for being, like I said at the beginning, you know, truth and transparency. It's all right there and people need to grow with you. And thank you for sharing your authentic self. And for us, you know, I feel closer to you. I don't know you. Just learning about what you went through with your mother. Um, sharing is a good way to to start connecting. So thank you, Arrow, so much for your authenticity and vulnerability. Well, come back to this show anytime. The door is always going to be open for the two of you. Thank you. Thank you, Arrow. You be brilliant today, okay?